Hello and welcome to Walk the Talk. I am Shekhar Gupta in Hubli at BVB Engineering College, which is now a university. And we are here at the gathering of Desh Pandey Foundation, uh, one of the largest and the most scientific philanthropic projects in India. And I have a diverse, and if I may say so, slightly complicated list of guests today for Walk the Talk. I have Guru Raj Desh Desh Pandey, a wonderful tech entrepreneur Thank who you. made his millions and billions uh, setting up innovative companies, running them, and then thought maybe India's future lies in applying innovation to solve many of our problems, Absolutely. which are millions of problems. And you are now dedicating your life to this. Uh, money making is done. Your own entrepreneurship is done. Now this is your entrepreneurship. Yes. Uh, we have Shravani Pawar, who at just 29, Shravani, so young, uh, she proves your hypothesis right that you can solve problems through empowerment and entrepreneurship and innovation because she had an idea you gave her the support and capital and what was the problem shravni problem was empowerment of women and you you helped and your innovative idea was why why not train women to be security guards yeah and so we have sumangala sumangala and your name? Savitri. Savitri. So these two are wonderful security guards, and I think they look quite formidable. I don't think I will take chances with them. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, first of all, you tell us, why did you think of women security guards? Because there's no shortage of male security guards in India. I wanted to make in something innovation, because I had uh, many ideas before starting Safe Hands, like giving training on Agarbatti, Kasuti, and can Safe Hands is your company and your yes. brand name. I yes. see Safe yeah, Hands 24 into, 24 into 7, that's come from NDTV. <laughs> <laughs> so I had many ideas. Then I thought that is all the same thing what other people also doing and there is no innovation. So I thought let me bring something, you know, which where the women is not existing. So I thought the women can be a good security guard in the industries. Hmm. So I thought this will, you know, fill the gap because many clients will prefer to have a lady guards, especially in the hospitals, school colleges and uh, apartments mm -hmm. and ladies hostels. Right. So I thought there is a demand and uh, there is no supply. We thought this is a good opportunity for the business as well and this is a good opportunity for the women to come in the do male dominated profession. And you started that at 23 years of age? Yeah. So what made you think of becoming entrepreneur at 23 and what took you to? Mr. Desh Pandey. Uh, I didn't know that I'm going to start the business and this will be a this much big. I just thought that this is an idea and I have to work it. I didn't realize that this will be a big and this will make me a more profit and uh, I will have a more scores of a, uh, money in my account. But I only thought that this will be a process of satisfying myself and satisfying the people who are around me. Because if I would have done my uh, master degree and other things, I would have got a job, secure job. But I would have not satisfied with myself. So I thought this will be a great opportunity for me because so when I thought, I have to do. If I don't do, then I won't think. So what is the revenue now? It's three crores. Three crores. <laughs> I like that. So, so they should tell us the story of when she, uh, how you found her and how she found you. Because well, she, she's a good, good brand ambassador yeah, for you. Yeah. So, you know, Shekhar, I think our philosophy as a foundation has boiled down to something very simple. There are three types of people in the world. There are some people who are oblivious to everything, don't have to worry about them. Some people who see a problem and complain about it. Some people who see a problem and get all excited about it. And the only difference between an impoverished community and a vibrant community is a mix of these people. So if you go to Boston where I live or Silicon Valley, entrepreneurship is in so much awe that everybody is looking for a problem to solve. Right. As a result, no obvious problem does not get solved. Right? Right. Impoverished communities, people, you know, problems become chronic, they get stuck mm. and then they, and they do, you complain. become You become resigned to them. Yeah, and then right. you become a victim. Right. And so right. what happens is that uh, they just choose to complain. Right. And so all the programs that we do in the sandbox right. is to encourage people to become problem solvers as opposed to complainers. So Shravani actually came as a student and she went through a program for seven months. You're the first pass, because second pass. She graduated in uh, social work, I think. No, no, then she I did MSW. MSW. BSW. And BSW. then BSW, BSW and then came to the foundation 
we run a thing called the fellowship program, where it's a seven months program. For social entrepreneurship. For social entrepreneurship. And it's a, they learn work ethic, how to communicate, the confidence, uh, failing, entrepreneurship, all of that stuff. At the end of the program, you know, usually about maybe three, four, five percent of the students actually start something on their own. And she was one of our stars who jumped in and decided to do this thing on her own. And, and this sort of, you know, convinces me that this is the only way to solve problems. And she had no capital besides no her capital. ambition and her idea. She pretty much bootstrapped herself. Right. You know, maybe we hired a couple of security guards, but the credit goes to her, not right. to us. Right. Uh, and when did she bring this idea to you, women security guards? Well, I, I, think, I think she was really hung up on this women empowerment. She, so she was into how can I improve the lives of women? And ultimately, she latched onto the fact that it's only if people make a little bit more money that they can send their kids to school, you know, have a better health care, all that kind of stuff. And so she came up with this idea that, uh, you know, there's no lady women guards, and there's a lot of places where they prefer lady guards as opposed to men. And, and she just launched it, and then it wasn't a, a straight line, just like any other right. startup. Right. But she made it. So, so uh, you had no capital when you started? Yeah, no capital. And before joining for DF, I didn't know how to use the computers as well. Hmm. So and now you now you talk of three crores as if it's embarrassing. It's too little, right? <laughs> uh, <laughs> could you talk of a, think of a crore when you started? No, I have never seen uh, fifty thousand rupees is in my hand. Right. So when I received a check of one lakh twenty-five thousand rupees, it was very from Deshpande Foundation. Yes. Yes. From that, that that was your initial capital. Initial capital. Yes. And what did you do with that money then? We invested on the uniforms and the registration process. Uh -huh. So uh, how does your business model work, you tell us now? We do agreement with the clients uh -huh. and we hire people on our role and we take our service charge from the client. Uh -huh. and, and you have a, uh, you have a healthy uh, commission there. Yes. We have one more of your soldiers joining us. <laughs> what is your name? Mala. 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 So, uh, are you all working here in the university? No, they are working in the different uh, offices. Different offices. So they 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 they've come here. So, uh, so what is the initial reaction that you got from clients? Did they trust a new company? You know, and from where did you get? Where is your catchment? From where did you find these women who were willing to do an unconventional job? First client was DF. Huh, they had to give us easy, the yes. service. They right. they gave that opportunity for Dish us. Pande Foundation. Dish yes. Pande Foundation. And by seeing our service, many people approached us. And when we uh, went to clients that we are providing this service, they said that, no, no, we don't want women, we only want male. Then I said, that, sir, why don't you try for one month? If you are satisfied, then you go ahead with the female security. Otherwise, we will provide the male. That was the first uh, meeting. Then now also they say that we don't want male guard. We are very much satisfied with the female guards. We have many clients from five years, four years. So they, you know, they suggest that we want one female guard, we want two female guards, especially in the hospitals and malls. And from where, what is your catchment area? From where do these women come and how do they find you? We, I know you advertise now. Yeah, we go to the SHGs, self-help groups. Right. And we go to the villages for camping. And we tell them that this is all the jobs we have. If somebody wants to join, then we have a trainings where they get trained and get job here. And who are they? Are they mostly housewives? Or housewives are they mostly? Most of them are working first time in their life. Huh. They are not very professional uh, thing, but now uh, they are learning everything because they are trained. And most of them are widows, destitute, divorced, hmm. single right. mother. Right. But they feel very safe here at the Safe Hands. Hmm. So, who came up with the name Safe Hands? Was it her idea? Or your well, idea? It's her idea. Her idea. You know. <laughs> And, no, and it was actually a, a group discussion, brainstorming session was happening at the uh, foundation. Yes, at the, foundation. the classroom. Right. So someone suggested that Safe Hands could be a very uh, good name. So, Desh, why entrepreneurship as a solution? Why not charity? You know, uh, give people more food, better food, give people uh, better education, give people better health care. That is the classical model. Well, you know, you that's leapfro what the... You leapfrogged it. Yeah, that's what the government does. Right. That's what a lot of the philanthropists are doing. But I think that that's not sustainable. You know, in fact, I live in Boston. We have MIT, we have Harvard, and we have a similar sandbox in Lower Lawrence. 
in spite of all that wealth, Lowell, Lowell and Lawrence, huge unemployment, everything else, problems don't get solved. Mostly because people try to come up with solutions and, and drop them into these areas.